Hey, what's up? My name is Lucas. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based out of West Michigan. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm talking about my Leica R vintage lenses. Why use vintage lenses? Well, there's a few reasons, and the reasons that I use them is because they have a lot of character, they're adaptable, and they are relatively affordable. These Leica R lenses aren't as affordable as like a Nikkor set, but at the end of the day, I feel like these Leica R lenses sit right in between of this very sharp, but also a lot of character in a look on a lens. So I opted to go with the Leica R lenses and you can go with any vintage lens you really want. A lot of them look really cool. A lot of them have a lot of unique characteristics. I just knew that I wanted to stay in the Leica world. So I opted for the Leica R lenses. My dad has a pretty expansive Nikon kit. Uh, vintage Nikon Nikkor kit, which maybe it'd be fun to compare the lenses at some point. Let me know if you're interested in that. Anyways, so that is, those. Are, that's why I like using them. They're easily converted to use on digital sensors. Most of them cover a full frame lineup and they have a lot of character in their lenses without compromising on sharpness. So which lenses did I opt for and why did I pick them? I'll, you can, there is a large spectrum of lenses in the Leica R world. You could spend six to $10,000 on a 19 millimeter Elmerit or a 35 millimeter Sumalux. Um, I don't have either of those lenses and I get by just fine. Although it would be incredible to try them out someday, but for, I'll start from my widest to tightest, which actually that's the order that I purchased them in. Uh, ironically, the first like R lens that I picked up was the 24 millimeter Elmerit. Um, I found a good deal on it and wanted to get it. It's kind of an odd lens, uh, but it's very fun to use. It's flares like nobody's business it has some really unique flaring elements and it definitely is a bit grungier of a look on it. it's uh kind of soft at tw at 2.8 which is wide open but as you stop it down it has a lot of sharpness to the image next is my 28 millimeter elmerit um the 24 was from 1979 and my 28 is from 1978. All of my lenses kind of sit in this uh, between 1978 and 1980, except for one. Um, but I'll get into that a little bit later. So my 28 millimeter I picked up because 28 millimeters is one of my all time favorite focal lengths. I picked that up over the 35 uh, just because it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more unique and I use it in my stills work as my wide angle lens and I really love it. I like having things kind of cohesive in that sense. So I like having my 28 millimeter. It is on every single shoot. It's one of the angles. It's one of my go-to lenses. Right after that is my 50 millimeter Summa Lux, which is also one of my go-to lenses. It I, I really sit in a 28 and 50 millimeter world. I love using them. They're very standard lens choices for me. Uh, I went with the Sumalux instead of the Sumacron because I wanted to have a little bit of extra reach when it comes to low light performance, but also it's just, it's one of those lenses that I'm gonna be using really frequently. And I wanted to not buy it twice and just go with the one that I really wanted in the first place. Uh, and then I have the 80 millimeter Sumalux, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite lenses of the group. It at one four, it's super sharp, and it's the way it renders light is just really unique and really beautiful. I love that lens. It's got a lot of great characteristics while also having a lot of sharpness in it, which is a kind of standard for <laughs> for these like our lenses. Um, I'm going to be showing uh, examples later in the video. My 50 millimeter Sumalux R is from 1978 and my 80 millimeter Sumalux 
is from 1980. And then the kind of the last lens that I bought, uh, most recent one is the 100 millimeter Apo Macro L Merit. <sighs> this lens is from 1986. It's by far the newest of my R set, but it is without a doubt the sharpest lenses I've ever used. I uh, use it on scanning my film negatives and I have a one-to-one -one conversion filter on it. It's the L Pro one-to-one, one-to-two, one-to-one conversion. And it's really sharp. It's probably, in my opinion, one of the most slept on lenses in the Leica R lineup right now. I think that people are going to start picking this up over the 16 millimeter macro, even though I have heard that that lens is incredible and it's well-priced as well. Um, but yeah, that one is a little bit newer just because they didn't have it uh, during the time range that I was building out my lenses. So all of my lenses are built in Germany. I don't think that there's a huge difference between them, but it's kind of the fun in shooting on Leica is having it built, made in Germany. And I don't have anything against built in Portugal. I mean, I'm filming on a... 2470 that was built in Japan, um, but it is, if, if given the option, I would prefer to pick up ones built in Germany just because it's a little bit more fun, I think. So let's get into modifications. So there's a handful of modifications that you can do with these lenses, and I've opted for most of them, not all of them. So I originally sent off a couple to sim mod lenses and that's where i got the lens caps and the customized lens caps which i think are really cool uh really fun and then they did a couple of my ef conversions um i opted to convert my lenses to ef instead of any other mount because i find it to be the most versatile for my needs uh, I shoot on Leica SL2 system and um, uh, Red Komodos, and I'm able to convert really easily just with one other adapter uh, to do that. So the adapter that I use on my SL2 system is the Earth uh, EF to L adapter. It's really cheap. It's really uh, sturdy. I have four of them, and they've never failed me. They don't, they haven't broken on me and they're really impressive lenses. And then I have a similar one for the Red Komodo that I'll use it on because it doesn't need electronics. They're not electronic lenses. Uh, but if you are shooting with them on a Leica SL2 or SL2S, you can actually manually input the, uh, the lens that you're picking from. And they have the Leica R lenses as an option and then it's not going to add any vignette correction or anything like that but it will put in the metadata which which lens you're using on your camera which is really convenient especially if you're taking pictures with it um, and you can easily navigate which lens took which photo um, and it just it cleans things up a little bit and uh, it also allows for in-camera stabilization, which is awesome. Um, the next mod that I that is possible, I'm just gonna move up the lens if that's okay. So you, I had the EF conversion. Uh, I opted to not do to not declick the my lenses. I did declick a couple of them, um, and then I reverted them just because there is slipping. Uh, Kevin Reyes has a great video on his like R lenses and he talks a bit about that. Uh, I'll, I would recommend checking out his video if you want more information on these lenses because he does a great job of explaining them in depth. Um, but the declicking is definitely something that I chose not to do just because it's not really <sighs> practical to me. I like, I don't mind having the clicks in the lens. If you are doing a lot of variation in your shots from lighting variation and you need that smooth transition then i would suggest doing it but other than that 
it's fine. Um, and then I, the last modification that I did is I you have all of them set to 82 millimeter filter threads with step up rings. And those have been great. All of my filters are 82 millimeters. And if I'm not using a matte box, I've got a filter on them. And that's really helpful for that. It's got a standard filter on it. I haven't had any issues with that. And so it takes it really well. Um, the only issues that I've had with these lenses is the infinity calibration can go off. Um, I mentioned sim mod lenses before. Uh, that's where I've sent my lenses to. I've actually had one of the focus throws totally go out on me. Um, and they were able to fix it. It did take a little longer. It was during 2020, but I was they were able to fix it for me. And it they came back perfect. So if you do need a little bit of assistance on recalibrating your infinity, I would definitely suggest uh, Simod, uh, Duclos is also a really good option as well. So now uh, I took some photos with all of my different lenses, comparing them to the Leica SL uh, 2470 and my Leica M28 and 50 millimeters. So are Le vintage Leica, are lenses worth it? I mean, I can't tell you how to spend your money, but I think that these lenses are gonna be in my kit for a very, very long time. I don't see them dropping in value anytime soon. Um, since I've bought these a few years ago, they've only raised in value since I've held on to them. I think uh, they're a sound investment, and I think that they are some of the most unique lenses that you can pick up today. I've heard people compare them to Cook lenses, which are forty to fifty thousand dollar lenses, and I've never shot on one personally. But they are these like our lenses are really unique really sharp and like you saw in those comparison photos they're like a lenses through and through they're very very high quality lenses and the i think um if you're interested now's the time to get into them because i like i said they're just going to keep going up in value if i ever sell these lenses it's going to be a really really sad day for sure so that's it if you've made it to this point please like and subscribe it really does make a big difference i appreciate you watching to the end of this video if you've got any questions or comments please leave them down below and i will see you in the next video